task for today is to get these steels in. You may notice that we are on a shiny new scaffold. It's not gonna make it. It's not. So, the task for today is to get these steels in. We've got two steels here and here, which will effectively be our wall plate, which will carry the flat roof and also carry the rafters of the pitch roof as well. So, we're going to get these in. These are nice and straightforward ones to go. It's the, the next set that are going to be a bit more complicated because we've got a load of stuff going on, everything being bolted together. But these ones are just two straight steels drop straight onto the pad stones and that is it. So we're going to use our beam lift. For now we're going to concentrate on getting these steels in. So we've got to get all these shifted because obviously the ones we need are at the bottom. Right, do we want to get another wheel in here? A really good idea, John. Oh. <laughs> One to go. We're gonna have to do a little bit of finite adjustment, but nothing too bad. It's gone pretty well, to be honest. Went up safely. Very good having one of those rather than trying to handball it, just do it in stages, get it up there. And now it's in. So, on to the next one. I do a little bit of adjustment like I mentioned earlier. We need to do a little bit of a, a trim off on top of the pad stone just to make sure it's perfectly flat because when they cast the pad stones, they're never actually truly square. So you do have to adjust them slightly. So there is a little bit of a knob on that one that we need to change. And also we need to slightly alter the angle. We did all the working out for the steel before anything was even here. The angle is slightly off. So we're gonna have to just move them out, trim it back slightly just so we can get our full bearing into the wall. Uh, but that's it, easy. Using one of these has made our life a lot easier and safer because previously you know, a lot of builders would have had to, including us, would have had to have got them up by hand onto trestles and stuff like that, which isn't safe really. So these are definitely an awesome bit of kit. So yeah, that's it. This job is done. Alex is going to carry on with the block work now and I'm going to go and do some plastering up the road. Bang on level. Bro. Bang, oh look, look, there we go. Bang on level. That's what we want to hear. He's good, he is. Good morning guys and welcome along to another day on our single storey extension. You may notice that we are on our shiny new scaffold. We've got our G-Deck set up. This is an awesome bit of kit. Today what we're going to do is get these steel sorted. So yesterday what we did, just trim this steel down in here so you can see it fits nicely in because we were slightly off with the angle. Like I mentioned before, we measured everything before any of the shower was up. So we've just had to do a little bit of adjustment here. But what that's enabled us to do then is shove right in with the steel and get our good bearing on there. We also had to do a bit of trimming down on this pad stone under here just to make sure that it was sitting down properly on the pad stone. So we're good there. So what we're going to do first of all is get that steel done the same. So we're going to do the cut on there, get the angle right. We do need to grind a little bit of that pad stone down there too. Once we've done that then, if you remember, I've got all the timbers cut here, which are basically just going to drop straight in. But there's going to be one big Velix window here, which is actually going to be an electric opener. And then on this side over here, there's going to be two windows, one there, one there approximately. Uh, they're going to be solid fixed windows. So what we've got over here 
just down there is basically they are some collars so because this is going to be a warm roof this collar basically sits down onto the osb apply whatever we're going to use on here and that sits on top of that and then our insulation will go up to it so what we're going to do we'll get some of our rafters in across here and then we can basically use the collars over there to set up exactly where we need to be because obviously we're going to need to put double trimmers in alongside it here just to basically support it obviously when it's in there so we can get all this completely set out now and ready now that they're here so that's one job for there and then obviously we've got to replicate that over here with our two windows uh, but obviously i'll show you the whole process as we're going along i've been cutting this the hilti saw started bouncing and biting a little bit so i pulled away because it doesn't feel safe and the blade has well worn away so I'm not going to do any more cutting with that because there's a strong chance that could splinter the disc and all the goggles and air defenders in the world are not going to protect you against one of them flying around at however many thousand rpm this goes around at so I'm just going to stop right there wait until I get back from the uh, from our secret location unit you've seen the video of that as well our little tool store uh, with a new disc so I can carry on with this cut. Just so you're aware as well, I mentioned the angle was slightly off because we'd done all the measurements for this before the shower was up. So it was kind of a educated guesstimate. We did work it out properly as well as we could, but you know, you saw all the videos, you know what it was like. So what we did in anticipation for this angle being off, because we did expect it to be, is we got these steels longer. We made these longer so we've got more of a bearing down there and then that enables us then to adjust this end to adjust this angle. So we did actually anticipate that this may be off, we may have to do this. So those of you out there that are thinking, oh, rookie error, rookie mistake, it wasn't. We allow for this. Honestly, we did. True story. Right, I'm going to now move over to that side and start getting these timbers in while we wait for this because I don't want to be standing around waiting. You know us, we like to be busy all the time. Tell me, Joe. Yeah, see, Joe is working. He's not just like looking at his phone. He's looking at a camera. He's doing YouTube stuff. Exactly. Important. Right, let's crack on. measured our collar which is here the larger one is going in this side so this will be the opening size that we need for that to sit in I've measured the points here on the rafter there and there and same on here and now I'm just gonna put some trimmers in so we're gonna get a couple of these cut send those across get those all screwed in nicely and that will make all this nice and solid then we can get our last couple of rafters in across here and then we can start to get this noggin out Joe has cut all our little bits of felt which are going to sit underneath the timbers on top of the white tongue blocks because that's what the manufacturer recommends that's what we do literally there's no wall plate needed we just sit it on top of the uh, the roof and felt on top of the block like that and then that's it yeah we need to also shim this up here and on that side because what we didn't account for is obviously the thickness of that we want to make sure everything's nice and level underneath the ceiling we are obviously going to have a fall on this which will fall down to that side because that's where our good twin's going to go uh, there's no parapet on this whatsoever so we're going to make sure all our falls head towards the outside of the building on that side so we need to make sure obviously this is nice and level for the interior for the inside of the ceiling so shim under there shim under there on the pad stones and same over that side as well the guys have come back and they brought us our disc so we can carry on cutting that now joe has grinded down the pad stone we had to do the same just to take the, the knobbles off like we did over this side so that can be done as well now so yeah we are flying and let's carry on working so slight change of plan as with any build it's always evolving and always changing just to make our lives a little bit easier so what we've decided to do we've checked out the drawings and basically to make sure that this fascia on this end isn't too big because it's obviously a low level single story uh, you don't want a massive fascia on here because it's going to look really unsightly so what we're going to do rather than putting firming strips on top of these rafters we're actually going to make these rafters into firming strips themselves we're going to cut an angle on these along this line and then what that will do then is give us the fall that we need uh, and then obviously keep the fascia down because obviously we would be, end up with a, quite a large fascia by the time we've got this then our warm roof makeup on top it's going to be quite a chunk uh, although the rubber will lap down as well you only see a smaller amount of fascia uh, it just basically makes everything look neater from that side so Pete is going to set up his circular saw get himself a little area set up in here and then get these timbers run down to this and then we can get these all dropped in then
So guys, that is the end of today. We've done a lot. We've started the construction of our roof. We've got our trimmers in. We've got our triple over there. We're gonna put another triple in here. We'll carry on with all this. We've got our steels in exactly where we want them to be. Alex has bricked them up, so that is it. They are going nowhere. Tomorrow, we're gonna to carry on getting this one done. We're gonna start on that roof over there as well. We will hopefully get some ply down, start getting this all shored up nicely, and hopefully get some ply down over there as well. Alex is gonna carry on down there and start continuing the brickwork through. So that'll be a good job done as well. So it's the end of the day. We're gonna get tidied up and we're gonna go home and we will see you in the morning. Good morning, Joe. Morning. Joe is just getting the lap joints sorted for our wall plate because we're going to be putting our wall plates across here. Alex is going to get the block work done there. Another wall plate across there and block work up there as well. We'll get started on that roof hopefully today. Alex is going to be doing a bit of brickwork and a bit of demolition. So we're going to be starting to knock through this today. So that dorm that's there is actually going to move forward slightly and it's going to come right across to here. So this wall across here is going to be built up. This wall will form the end of the dormer, and then the dormer is going to come right across to here. So what we need to do is basically take all this uh, this roof out. There's a steel going to go in to obviously carry the front face of the dormer. Uh, so we need to do a lot of remedial work around here. The door in there needs to be blocked up as well. So there's going to be quite a bit going on down there today. What we're doing here is basically putting a triple rafter alongside where this window is going to sit. So the reason we're doing that is because you can see over there, they are our frames, yeah? So they are basically an upstand, which sit in here for the warm roof construction, and they've got a lip on the bottom. And what we need to do is make sure that we've got enough bearing for our ply to sit on top of, and for that to sit on top of as well. So we wanna make sure we've got plenty of chunk here to be able to fix down into, because there's like a flange which runs around the perimeter of that collar. Uh, and that needs to be fixed down onto a solid surface. So we want to make sure that everything can run through nicely and we've got plenty of fixings for everything everywhere. We've also got our double trimmer in here, both sides as is normal practice. Uh, and then we get some additional rafters in here, which will be angled off down to here. You can see that we've cut all these, well Pete cut all these yesterday, like I mentioned. So that gives us our fall built into the roof. And we also need to put an additional fall here, which is going to cast the water this way and that way. If you can imagine the Velix is going to sit up here, we don't want any water to trap against the back we want it to naturally fall away so from the center point of this span here there'll be falls going that way and falls going this way which will cast the water away and then everything will head down towards this side of the building and off into the gutter like i mentioned there's no parapet so the water will just go straight off the edge and into the gutter room which will be down there as well so i'm going to get a couple more rafters cut for in here just to set our falls for that and then across there as well we've also got our fault here which sits underneath like that as per the manufacturer's instructions so we'll get all those in place as well uh, and then we'll carry on so what we're going to do here as you know it's a slight angle just a very slight angle the extension is to the original build uh, and i mentioned this wall is going to be built up so what we're going to do this rafter will be removed the wall will be built up and then i'll uh, basically stick a rafter to the wall there which will run across and then we'll put some trimmers across here into into basically this this rafter that will run across here so that will pick up all this area of the seed in there make sure everything's nice and solid Right, so I've got my additional three supports in here. What I've done is I've actually used the same timbers that we use for these rafters with the angle cut on. So that still will provide the fall going this way. And then what I'll do is, once we come to put the, the ply on, I'll then put some additional furring strips on top of these rafter points here, which will then give me the fall out away from the back of this velox here. Just thought it was easier to do this way because if we just put a straight bit of timber in, it's gonna bring it up to here, possibly causes issues. So we can just put a small fall on here. A 160 fall across this is gonna give us plenty. It might even make it a little bit more 
just to make sure it throws any water straight away away from the back of the window this will all be sealed in anyway so if there was any water that was just slowly trickling away it wouldn't cause any issues but obviously it's better to get it away as quick as possible so it's not sat around so that's what i've done here Next up then, I'll use the remainder of the timber that I chopped off here to carry these legs through here. Obviously, there's no need for additional fairing strips either side there because the water is just going to go straight that way anyway. So, yeah, that is it. Let's crack on. Right, so next up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get these timbers bolted together. I've got some bolts here, so I'm just going to use my arg bit over there. Well, it's not my arg bit, it's Joe's. I've nicked it off Joe. Borrowed, borrowed it off Joe. Thanks, Joe. That's mine as you Oh, we share it. We share it. <laughs> So I'm just going to basically bolt this together now, hold this all tight. We haven't screwed it together because obviously if I screw it and then bolt it, the screws are going to stop it pinching tightly together. So that is why these are left loose. So once they're all bolted in, that'll be nice and solid then and it'll go absolutely nowhere. So I've got all my bolts in along here to hold everything nicely together. The more eagle-eyed of you may have noticed that I've literally just got round washers in here. We wouldn't normally do that. There wasn't any square plate washers at the merchant. So I've just done this as a temporary measure just so I can carry on, get this all bolted together. I know exactly where everything's going to be then. And so I will get these changed for square plates. They won't just be round ones like that because obviously these are going to do not much good at all. They're just going to go straight in. So the whole point of putting the plate washer in there is to make sure that this pinches in nicely without any of the timber being destroyed basically and it keeps it nice and secure. I'll get these cut across here as well then i'm going to run a piece of batten just across this end and across this end just to hold everything in place and stop it moving so i can traverse is that the right word traverse walk across it basically nice and safely without anything flipping over and then i can get all my perimeter noggins in i can get my lateral straps on as well we've got actual twist straps going on here because obviously we haven't got a wall plate so we've got a twist strap which will come up the wall and then twist round and then fix to the side of the of the rafter here that's it basically i'll get some noggins in across the perimeter some noggins in the webbing of the steel and also some perimeter noggins out here as well just makes it easier for fixing the plasterboard I'll also have a bit of a measure up as well and see if I can see where the plasterboard is going to land. So it may be a case of just putting a few extra little bits of timber here and there. So when we come to plasterboard it, the plasterboard will sail through nicely. We've got nice easy fixings and it just makes the life a lot quicker further down the line. So let's get on. So guys, we've had a good day today. We've got the vast majority of this roof now finished. It's all noggined out. All the trimmers are in, everything's in. Joyce hangers are in. That is basically it for now on this side of the roof. Joe and Alex have started down there doing a bit of demolishing work. This wall needs to be built up so we can get our last bit of timber bolted to the wall across there. And then we will trim across into those so tomorrow what we're going to do we will be cracking on with this side of the roof again it's just the same sketches over there but we've got two windows going in here two valixes in there so that is about it for today all we've got left to do now is tidy up and go home so we will all see you in the morning bye bye pete bye pete <laughs> goodbye good morning guys and welcome back to another day on site Alex and Joe are just over there doing a bit of destruction. I'll just take you down now and show you what's going on. Go and have a look, shall we? In here, we've got... Hi, guys. Hey, man. Basically, what's going to happen is this centre wall here is going to come out completely. And then this whole area, this was the downstairs toilet, is going to be transformed into the boot room. So we're going to have a window in place here. There'll be a door down here and then another window there. This wall will be built up to about this point here. Uh, and then, yeah, this will be a whole boot room area. So this wall on this edge here is going to be built right up to form at the end of the dormer. Um, so we need to also put steel in across. It's basically about here, something like that straight across there which will carry the face of the door and obviously carry the new joist as well for the floor upstairs and the roof down here the ceiling down here sorry so that's what's going on down there back up the scaffold me and pete hi pete how you doing mate you're right yes mate me and pete are going to carry on 
with this roof today we're also going to be putting in some additional noggins here which will carry our rafters coming down from this main roof onto here obviously our rafters will sit on this wall plate but there's also going to be an additional splay which will come out here so we're going to put in some noggins across here as well so we can mechanically fix down into those so that's our first job and then we'll get moved over onto that roof over there so without further ado let's carry on Pete's got his headphones on and he's shouting at me. Uh, Pete, <laughs> I am going on holiday tomorrow. <laughs> so anyway, uh, while I've been gone, I've had to go and get some new router bits. Uh, Pete has absolutely smashed this. We've got one window going here and we've got one window going here. So we've marked everything out. So we've got triple timber here, triple timber there, triple timber there and a triple timber here. But what Pete's done is basically get this all set out ready. So these are the internal measurements of the windows there and there. So we can now start to get our trimmers in. Pete's just machining. Hi Pete. Pete Hello. is just machining up some more of these rafters over there because we need this detail to go over the webbing like I've mentioned before and shown you before. Uh, so we need obviously a load more timbers to go in here because we've got triples either side of these windows It obviously chews up quite a lot of timber in this roof uh, So while Pete's doing that, I'm going to start getting these trimmers sorted out get these all marked up and cut and then yeah, that's it Smashing it Pete yeah. Guys also are downstairs doing an excellent job of destruction Basically annihilated all that so what we've got to do now I've got to take out basically that wall there uh, and this section above the door and that corner as well because there's old breeze blocks in there so we're going to just take those out so we're going to replace them with our wide tongue blocks so it all ties through nicely because uh, the ties that are in there currently it won't fit through with our blocks and then this doorway is going to be blocked up with wide tongs as well uh, with the pad stain put on top because we've got a steel which is going to run across there like I said before to carry the door mess so that will all need to be rebuilt up as well so let's get on with it because Pete is chomping at the bit because I'm talking on the camera and he can't use the router. Go on Pete. So what Pete is doing is basically using the jig. We like a jig, don't we, Pete? Yeah, love a jig. Mass so, production. Mass production. So these are the webbing details for all these rafters. So obviously we've got a lot of them to do. So we've got a nice little production train set up. Train? Chain? Production line. Line. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's cold and wet. It's getting to me. <laughs> So now Pete's used the router to get down to a certain depth. We'll then use the jigsaw then to cut off this excess, get rid of the bulk of this, get a load of those run off, and then use the straight guided bit, like we showed you before, just to basically trim all this excess off. That's it. Cool, Pete. Nice one. Now we've got, what, 368 more of these to do? Another 11, was it wasn't it? Was it eight? Eight. Let's so just say eight, that's less. Yeah. Yeah, it feels better. Yeah, feel better about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to make it. It's not. This is a uh, 54 volts of power, so Pete keeps telling me, but it couldn't even do this cut. Fair enough to be fair, it has cut loads already, but still, that's not the point. <laughs> Take two. 
So as you know, I'm a Makita man and there's been a bit of a healthy conflict, shall we say, between me and Pete because of his 54 volt beast that he's bought. I bet, oh, he can hear me, he is listening. I'll just hear 54. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, to be fair, this is definitely a better machine than my sickly saw, but mine is only 18 volts, so it's not really a proper comparison, is it? But this is good. It does feel like a corded machine. It's very, very good. I would highly recommend it. Nice piece, good. Right then, guys, we have had a good and productive day today. This roof is basically on, we've got the guts of it in, we've obviously still got to do perimeter noggins in the steel, perimeter noggins down there, our central noggins through here as well. Also our bits of nine two across here like we did over that side to carry the rafters when they drop down. We've also got to put our jiffy hangers on, we've run out of bolts as well, so I need to get some more of those. I also need to get the square plate washers like I mentioned before, but we've basically got the guts of this roof on today. That roof is as far as we can get it for now. We have got some brickwork to go up there and whatever before we can finish all that, so we've had had a pretty good day today, haven't we, Pete? Yeah, all good, my right. All good. The guys down there as well. Let's sneak through the scaffold and see what they've done. They have had a smashing good day. <laughs> so this corner over here, basically it wasn't tied into this wall very well. There was a few little pockets that were in there and that was it. So it's been decided with ourselves and the client that we'll actually take that down completely. We're going to rebuild this. This will now be a 300 mil cavity wall around there. Whereas before it wasn't, so we can get a nice bit of 90 mil, the same insulation that we've used there, in here. So this will all be nice and warm. We've got a bit to do in the floor as well down here. We've got to actually chase out for this service pipe. Don't you, if you remember from previous episodes, uh, the soil pipe which runs down there is actually going to be moved internally. And it will actually come through this floor and then into the inspection chamber which is down there. If you remember, we, we dug a little section out and there's a little bit of pipe underneath the floor here ready and waiting so we just cut a section of this floor out and we can get our new service pipe in but this is pretty much done the sparkies came earlier and disconnected all the electrics they're all wrapped up nice and safe the plumber was meant to come today and do the pipe work but he hasn't where are you chris yeah you where are you yeah uh, uh, so yeah that's about it all we got to do now is tidy up me and peter off tomorrow we're, we're going for a little break away, aren't we, Pete? Yeah, not together, though. <laughs> not together, honest. That's what Pete thinks. I'm going to turn up. I know where you're going. You've already told me. That's why I've been slightly asking you all day where you're going. <laughs> Outside the tent. <laughs> Hi, Pete. Hi, Pete, with my camera scratching yeah, in the tent. Camera, I'm going to take a baseball. <laughs> Good man. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.